Hi, this tutorial is intended to help you use and understand Pebble and the tests in the Pebble test battery. And I'm uh, doing this screencast on uh, a Macintosh, but any um, this should work the same on Windows as well. So the first thing you need to do is open up Pebble version 2, and it will eventually um, show the launcher like this. And I have a couple other tutorials that show how to install this and some of the basics of using and setting up aspects of the launcher. So um, probably one of the biggest reasons people use Pebble is the large um, set of tests, but um, you know many of the tests people may not know about or um, use off very often, even if they are things that they are interested in because they just don't know about them. And so you can, um, once you open the launcher, if you click on the battery, it will bring up this window that has probably about a hundred different tests or at least tests and versions of tests across a bunch of different directories. And clicking on any one of these, if you just click on it once, will give you a screenshot and a little bit, for most of them, a little bit of uh, a summary of what that test is about. And actually, if for most of them, there is a uh, sort of a Pebble wiki. And if you say, I want to know about the Pebble Corsi test, if you select it here and you click on the wiki, it brings up, it brings you directly to the Pebble wiki page that will tell you things about setting, making changes to the file to fix things, the data formats, data interpretations, and re relevant references. Um, the, that wiki page is better for some tests and not as good for others, but generally when people have questions about data formats, um, when I answer them, I update the wiki with my answer, and so uh, those things that people have more questions about, the wiki pages are much more complete. Um, and so um, if we go through these, we can see that there's a lot of different tests for memory and perception and um, decision making, uh, personality, things like that. Most of these directories have one test within them, but many of them have multiple tests within them or versions of the same test. And then within each um, test, there's often uh, parameters that you can edit to customize it for your needs. So um, let's see, let's find one we might want to use. And we'll start at the top, ant. So this is the attentional network test by Fan and Posner. And it's an implementation in Pebble of this test. And there are other free versions out there, but you may find this useful. There's ways you can customize it that you can't customize others. And um, so if you want to run this, we can click again and get you get have to get into the directory and select the .pbl file. Um, within every test in the battery, if you open up um, that folder, and it's the same, it would be the same as opening up um, under your documents directory, the Pebble EXB 2.0. If you open up battery, the same files are here. So I can open it up here within my Finder or my Windows Explorer and get exactly the same view. Um, there's a data a params and a translations folder for every one of these. Also the screenshot I saw here is available there, <coughs> which you could use if you wanted to put it into a publication. You can just grab it from here. Um, these are all open source, so there's no problem with using this for publications. Um, and usually you don't have to deal with these two. If if this had translations to another language, that meaning like left shift is translated into Spanish or something, 
those would appear in a separate file here and we can see that there's an English translation uh, I guess Brazilian and Portuguese uh, Portuguese and, and Brazilian Portuguese or something like that different translations for the ant so if we want to run the ant as a single test we can select run test and here is the instructions it has various basic instructions any of these can be translated in the file I showed you earlier and I'll go through um, instructions on how to make your response and things like that and this might take 15 or 20 minutes to complete the test I'm not exactly sure so that's the basic test and um, you know it's set up to run a fairly standard version of it um, but maybe you want to change aspects of it not all aspects can be changed but for any any test there are components that are changeable and you can change those by going to this parameters edit and in here there's a few um, components that are changeable there's the intertrial interval and here it's 4000 meaning 4000 milliseconds or four seconds so that's pretty long um, and it helps people sort of um, uh, get less interference between trials but maybe you think that's too long or maybe you want longer or something like that um, I think this here the show footer is an option because I think in the original uh, Phantom Posner test they didn't have instructions uh, about the keys at the bottom and so if you want to replicate that exactly you can turn the footer off but it's usually handy to give a person a reminder of which keys they are because sometimes they start and they ha weren't quite paying attention and they don't know which buttons to push um, this you know this is the if you want to change the keys you could actually um, use an alternate key code here like you could do A and L or something like that um, and then this gives you I guess how many repetitions of the whole design you want to do and it by default it is two um, four queue conditions by two target locations by two by three so it's three times six that's 12 there's 48 trials in each design so this would give uh, 96 trials if there's two runs if you want say 500 trials you could make this ten, around 10 and that wouldn't be uncommon to have hundreds of trials but this one just has about a hundred um, you could also I guess there's an option here to show the RT at the end this might give them more um, intrinsic reward because they're trying to be faster and this is an, uh, something about whether neutral flankers should be um, tried so let's say we want to show neutral flankers generally um, the way this works is a zero means no and a one means yes so if I hit uh, one I could then um, I could say save file and exit and now you can see how there's the default I can choose. The default parameter set is the original, or I could specify this alternative. Um, furthermore, we looked earlier about how to add things to a chain. I could add actually either of them, both of them to a chain. So I could say, first I want to run through once with normal. Now I want to run through once with um, with the new configuration and you can't tell the difference here but if I double click it'll tell me I'm using ant here and uh, I'm using default here oh maybe those were in the wrong order so I wanna I can change sort of the appearance what this is called here um, you can edit those however you want um, to help you know what's going on better and um, so the parameters can work 
well together with an experiment chain so that it's easy to run the specific version. If you don't do that, then, you know, if I navigate around, if you're just expecting your experiment or a research assistant to run the right one, they would navigate to Ant, and then they'd do this, and then they'd have to select that, and then run. And they'd have to remember to do all of those things. But um, other, but you know, if if you set it up as the default experiment chain, it's just here w using the right settings by default. Um, so let's. Let's look at what happens to the data when we run this. So I'm gonna, I guess, run uh, not a f not a full experiment, but we'll run this part ways through. So I hit launch chain, and oh, here's an interesting thing. Um, so I had subject nine, and if we look uh, in the data, I've used this previously, so. Subject 9 already existed. Uh, there was probably nothing in there, but it had started and I'd, I'd exited out. And so it's, instead of creating a new subject, it says, well, I don't know what to do here. Um, <coughs> should I um, use a new code? Or should I just add to the session, add it to the normal files? Uh, so you can choose new code. and say well maybe I wanted to use 11 and then it started up so this ant task is sort of a flanker and queuing and alerting task all together and so here's some examples where when the middle one is pointing right you want to use the right shift and when the middle is pointing left you want to use the left shift and all of these examples are examples of of right versus left and the show neutral flanker should be if these are filled versus empty. So I'm going to do a few trials of this so we can look at um, what it's going to look like. And this is just sort of a demo to show the subject what to expect. And once they get the hang of it, they hit the space bar. Remember, use the left and right shift to respond, press any key to begin. So here the experiment has begun. So I'm going to do trials here. So you can see the intertrial interval is four seconds. And if you count it out, you can see that they are at about four second pace. And in this task, there's actually three different costs associated with it. And if we ran through all 100 trials, it would do some summary statistics and calculate the overall cost for each condition and save those um, a couple different places. So I'm going to close this one just so we can see what happens when we do this and I'm just gonna add the session this time and now you can see the these um, horizontal bars didn't appear in this case and that was controlled by that one parameter of using neutral flankers maybe you want it, want them or maybe you don't um, and there seems to be some preferences by people to do it one way versus another and so I'm gonna do a couple trials here we can look at then what happened to the data file. All right, that was incorrect. All right, we'll stop here. Okay, so now if we look over here um, in the data folder, there's, if you, um, actually we're not even in the ant folder anymore. So, but in the launcher, because we're using a um, launch chain, but I'm back here in the ant folder. And, and here, what happens is for all of the pebble tests under data, a new folder will be created for each subject. 
and that folder will have one or more files for each subject. And then sometimes, especially for the ant test, there's a number of other um, files created. We can look at what some of these are. Uh, perhaps, maybe if we can open with, so here is ant log and this tells me a timestamp for when it started, when practice began, and if I'd gone any further, um, anything else. So this could help me track down um, when subjects ran on which computers in your lab and things like that. So I did 11, and then the next run through I didn't I didn't change it, so I did nine. Um, there is here there's a pooled file that every every single trial will get um, recorded to for every subject, and so um, here's the 11, here's the five trials for subject nine. And this could be handy if you just want to pull everyone together in a single file. But, um, and then um, there's a couple others that probably only get created at the very end of each script, at end of each run, so they're probably blank. But if we open up, um, actually 11 was the first one I did. It creates two files. Um, the CSV file is a line by, a trial by trial log. And there's a bunch of different columns. We see that it's subject 11 every time. This is block zero, which was practice. So it's get, it gets tagged as practice. And we can see um, all the details of whether there's a target, direction, flanker, and um, delay, and the absolute time. And you can see, I guess, how the start of each trial is actually to the millisecond uh, 4,000 milliseconds after the start of the next one. So it's in sync as a as a trial, um, I guess, trial onset asynchrony that they're happening every four seconds, regardless of what your response time is. Um, and I guess it, we must have a timeout to prevent the response time from being longer than that. Um, and here, is the response I made, whether each one was correct, and the response time, which was generally around half a second, and sometimes a little longer, and sometimes a little shorter. Um, similarly, I have one here, and you can see, I, mean, I didn't get very far here, but um, remember I made a couple errors here, here was an error I made that was a timeout error. I didn't actually respond in time, so it was 1,700 milliseconds. And you can then analyze this. So if it, if it hadn't created a pooled file, which I guess it did, we could create our own pooled file using the um, combined data tool. Um, but we first want to nav. I'm going to re-navigate to battery ant, go to data, and then if I say combine data, this will um, just a simple search and will combine all the different um, files that match some pattern. So I might say I want it to match um, dot CSV. Um, actually, it doesn't work that way. You have to. You don't have. You would have to say. Dot, dot CSV. Here's um, all, and then I could add some excludes, like I don't want pool or log or all. And this now gets me just the data files. If I do that filtering enough, I can figure out things I want in there and things I don't want in there and do a good job at getting that. And so then if I say well, combine and save, it will save it to a file called pooled, but I will also then open it, which will do this. Oh, and you can see how it looks like it's going to have this header in each one. So that was a mistake. And I want to say file contains header. And maybe I want to add file name to the data. We can see how that differs. So if I combine and open now, um, 
it adds a column that tells me what file it came out of, which could be useful if my file names don't exactly line up with my subject codes, and it only uses one header and combines them all that way. There's other tools that permit this. One of my favorite ones in R is called PrepDat, but this is a handy way of doing it that's sort of customized to the way that Pebble saves its data. Um, so I'll close that. All right, so that's um, basically how to run uh, run scripts from the Pebble, Pebble test battery and where the data appear. Um, if we were to look back in this folder, we can probably see the pooled file here that we had created. And um, so all of the data for any task within the battery will appear in the folder um, in the folder of the test. And this is a handy way of archiving both the instructions you used for creating the task and the data in one place. And what I'll often do then is make a copy of this, place it in my own archive, and I'll have a permanent record of both the the procedure and the data together um, in one place.